I've been thinking for a while. Why did the call them whatever the elite, the leaders, the whatever you want to call them? Why did they give us the internet? Right? How does it advance their goals and their agenda? Right? And I was always on the optimistic side where I couldn't quite figure it out. And I figured that people like us would use the internet to, as we have done, learn about their plans, expose their plans, and use it to bring them down. But so I couldn't figure out why they would give it to us. Like, why expand the knowledge base? Why let people across the world communicate and organize and, you know, just disseminate ideas and, and stuff like that? You know, because how it's good of mankind kind of thing, the Internet, right? Like, I feel like it's overall in general, the Internet has been a positive thing for humanity. And they created it, or at least they tapped into it. It might always be there. I don't, I don't know. But they figured out a way to harness it and deliver it to everybody relatively easily and cheaply. And I couldn't ever figure out why. Like, why would they give us this power? Because, I mean, I was born in 79. So throughout the 80s when I was growing up, I didn't get a computer till high school or of any kind. Like, you know, it was an old desktop thing. And, you know, life went on. You'd go to the library, make phone calls, watch television. That was it. <laughs> you know, I couldn't just type in anything I wanted to and learn about it or discuss it. or It just wasn't an option. So there was that gigantic leap where there's all these possibilities for people to research things and learn about things and discover and share. So how does that advance their agenda? I could never quite figure it out because they wouldn't just give it to us to give it to us and hope everything worked out. They would have to have a plan when they released it. And I'm pretty sure it was to identify the people that are going to be an issue. Because the internet as we know it, it's already over. Like in the United States, uh, net neutrality passed through unelected bureaucrats. So that's the law of the land now, apparently. That's how... Our, that system works and elected bureaucrats decide things and that's it. There's no way to challenge it. So the internet in America is gone. And then America has also handed over the control of the internet to the new world order, international one world people, I'm assuming, or governments, or corporations, or whoever, whoever's running things, really running things. It's officially gone. It's out of our control. Nobody really knows probably where it's going, who's going to be in charge. I mean, like a committee of a couple people that decide everything for everybody in the world. What do you get to see on the internet? What do you get to talk about? What gets scrubbed? All that stuff. It's going away. And it's going away relatively soon, in my opinion. But again, I don't. nobody knows the date. I don't know. So I figure that they did like a cost-benefit analysis. When in some war room somewhere with a bunch of evil men smoking cigars. We need, the, they need, now I'm talking as them. So they need the internet to provide smartphones, to have Twitter, to have a way for the citizenry to self identify as an issue, right? Which we have done. So they now know, having recorded visually and audio. audio on anything that has been done on or near an internet connected device in the last 20, just as a round number, last 20 years. So even if you're not a person, even if you are a regular person, nine to five, you watch your reality shows, you go to sleep, you work, you feed the beast and you don't really question anything. You may vote, you may not, you don't really care. If you're one of those people, still, if you're sitting around with your friends talking about anything the government doesn't like, they know that. So you're on a you're on a list. You have a folder. Everybody has a folder, and the stuff gets filled up. People like us, it gets filled up more and more and more. And so the internet is absolutely vital to identifying those people, classifying and sorting the problems, I guess, in their in their minds. And so that's the benefit. The cost is what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that the people could use this powerful weapon 
against the very people who gave it to us. Right? So that's why they have to work extra hard at propaganda on television and propaganda on the internet itself. Right? It, it ballooned rapidly out of their control and now they're bringing it back. And once they get it, finally, whatever this upcoming event is going to be, it'll come back, Internet 2.0. I'm assuming at the same time, they'll either prevent us from accessing it somehow, easily, probably with a flip of a switch, or we won't be around to be a problem at all anymore. And everybody left will have the sanitized version of the Internet, and that's it. All the past history, all the... 9-11 9-11 videos that have been around forever, they're all gone. They're never coming back. You know what I mean? Like, anything that goes against the official narrative is never coming back. So, Internet 2.0 will basically just strictly be an entertainment device. You know, like, you'll be able to watch your movies, communicate on social networks, things like that. You'll be able to watch videos, but there aren't going to be any truth videos around. The research aspect is going to go down heavily. Like, you'll have Wikipedia which they control. And that's about it. Like all private things that might have, like I said, anything that goes against what they want you to know, that you know, you're going to be able to find it in your search. You know, like even if it, it's still going to exist, I think it, it's always going to exist somewhere, but I wouldn't be able to find it. You wouldn't be able to find it if you looked for it, unless you specifically knew the URL, you know, that's how they're going to make it. So the time where, <clears throat> We've all self-identified ourselves. It's like if, if, if the CIA or whoever could have gone into every room of every house and every car in this, in the entire country, in the entire world, and just been like, plant a bugging device so that we can find out who's up to what, you know? Because back in the 60s, the 70s, all before that, like, there was a lot of work probably to find dissidents. Now everybody just talks around or into their phones or computers or whatever. So it's so easy. So everybody's self-identified and they're about to get past that turbulent point where the internet could be an issue for them. They're, like I said, it's it's basically over now. So it, internet 2.0 is coming after whatever they have planned. Major disaster. People disappear. Whatever version of the internet comes back is never the same. Or, or, hear me out on this, let's fight these bastards. Let's create a world that promotes truth and love, knowledge, and advancement. Let's do that. A world that is just and fair for everybody. Let's get rid of all the current systems. Do it right. We can do it. There's nobody saying we can't do it. Except for them, and they're a bunch of jerks. So, let's get rid of them. Do what we should do, or should have done thousands of years, or did do thousands of years ago, but lost our way, and now they're in charge. Let's get back to good people in charge, doing good things. What do you say?